okay let's have a look here what's going on in this question let's see show that if x1 y1 is a point on each of the circles then it is also a point on circle s2 plus lambda s1 well that's actually obvious enough that i, I don't have to say it because because yeah, okay, I'll write, I'll write some formal argument down. So if x1, y1 is on s1, then that would mean x1 squared plus y1 squared, etc., etc., all the way to plus 2, must equal 0 from the definition of being on that circle. Likewise, um on s2 it would mean the same thing s1 squared but well actually 2x1 squared plus 2y1 squared etc etc minus 3 equals 0 uh, therefore s2 plus lambda s1 s1 will equal 0 plus lambda sorry there's no one there lambda times 0 which of course is 0 end of proof so, uh, is that, I mean, this is, sorry, I mean, to me, this is very obvious that this has to be true. I don't know if they need us to flesh that out more, but, but really, uh, I think that's it. I guess the only thing, maybe, do we have to prove that this is a circle as well? Maybe. Maybe not. I, I'm not sure. I think there's enough left in the question that perhaps we don't have to do that as well. I mean, we're told it is a circle, so I guess I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, find the center and radius of the two circles. All right, so let's complete the square. That'll be x plus 2 squared. Ah, 3 plus y minus 3 over 2 squared equals 17 over 4. Now this one's a bit of a pain. I'm going to definitely divide by 2 uh, to turn that into a 3, a 1, and a 3 over 2. So then completing the square of that equation. That's x minus 3 squared, sorry, x plus 3 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 23 over 2. And uh, you might feel the need to put the 2 back in. Uh, but I don't actually because what we're looking for is the center and the radius. So it's minus 2 and uh, 3 over 2 with radius of root 17 over 2. And then the other one is minus 3 uh, minus 3 and minus 1. And then the radius is root 23 over 2. So I've done that part now. Hence or otherwise show that the circles intersect. I guess if we just look at the distance. So the distance between the centers would be the square root of 1 squared plus 5 over 2. 25 over 4. That's 29 over 4, I think. root 29 over 2. So I'm looking at the distance between the centers here. And then if you look at the sum of the radii, I don't think this is going to be anything nice. No. 
root 23 plus root 17 over 2. That's roughly equal to 4.459, whereas root 29 over 2 is roughly equal to 2.69. So I've done something wrong because that's... Oh, no, that is right, actually. The, the distance is less than the sum of the radii. So therefore, they intersect. Oh, I'm not happy that the numbers didn't work out nicely. I wonder if I made any mistake. That's definitely minus 2 and positive 3 over 2. And that one there is definitely minus 3 and minus 1. So the radii is going to have a fraction in it because of the, the 3 over 2 here. And... Uh, That one has a fraction in it as well because of the 3 over 2. Yeah, okay. That's done. Lastly, I wouldn't be surprised if I made a number mistake there if someone wanted to point it out. Uh, two circles touch the y-axis and contain the point of intersection of S1 and S2. Uh -huh. Find the equation. Uh, so I don't know if I need my previous workings. Two circles touch the y-axis and contain the point of intersection of S1 equals 0 and S2 equals 0. Find the equation of the circles. Ah, let's go back in time. Okay. So I will likely need my centers and radii. Okay. Oh, why did the radius have to work out to be so messy? I'm going to have a quick double check of just the first one. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's still root 17 over 2. Okay, so two circles touch the y-axis and contain the point of intersection of S1 and S2. So S1 would be somewhere like here. Um, and root 17 divided by 2 is a little bit bigger than 2. So it will just about clip the y-axis. And then the second one here is minus 3 minus 1. Will it clip the y-axis as well? No. Because minus 3 is too far out. So it be something like this then. Okay. And what have we got? We've got two circles touch the y-axis and contain the point of intersection of S1 and S2. So, okay. Okay, so there's going to be, well, that's in, two circles touch the y-axis and contain the point of intersection of S1 and S2. Well, it looks like S1 is one of the circles in question. Um, so that touches the y-axis. I wonder if they mean touches as a tangent, though. Or just intersects it. That's an interesting question. I guess they might mean touches as a tangent. So like there could be one circle here like that. And where would the other one be? Oh, it would be like... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. I'll just draw one for the moment. Okay, so some some circle like that. Okay. 
So just as a tangent. It's a tough one. I'm gonna to have to think about this for a moment. Okay, I thought about that for about 30 seconds. I just had to visualize something here. I was kind of, let me just remove this here. So I'm picturing if the circle touches the y-axis as a, as a tangent, then it means this point here would be out of distance minus or. So that would be minus or. Um, and the height there. That distance would have to equal or. I really don't want to, but I think I'm gonna to have to find these two points. I can find this, I can, I can find this line. So, if I bisect this line, and draw a perpendicular, that will have to be on the center. I mean, the center will have to be on that line. That's a very good start. Then I need to find a point on that line where I can be the same distance to both of these as I can be to the y-axis. Okay, let's let's find that line first. Um, by making these equal, or by subtracting them, or in fact by using that equation with lambda equal to uh, minus a half. So you can get the common chord here. So x squared minus x squared, y squared minus y squared, 4x minus 3x is x, minus 3y, minus 1y is minus 4y, and then 2 minus minus 3 over 2, that's 2, plus 3 over 2, that's 7 over 2, equals 0. Okay. Oh, I'm not satisfied with that either. I've just copped something now. I think the whole point of the first part, they said, and I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, they were trying to help us. That's what they were trying to do with the first part. I've just realized that now. So what we've proven in the first part is that if you have two circles and that point is on each of the circles, then this equation here is also a circle. And I didn't realize until just now that that was there to help us. Oh, I can't erase that. So that's exactly the situation we have. We have two circles and x1, y1 is a point on each of these circles. There it is there. And there's actually an x2, y2 on it. Uh, and that's s1 and that's s2. They are also points on this third circle formed by the equation s2 plus lambda s1. So if we can draw another circle here, it passes through those um, by using this equation. And the size of it, and its orientation is just affected by whether the lambda is positive or negative or so on. So we do have the equation of the circle we're looking for, although it contains a lambda. But let's go with that. So the equation would be uh, 2x squared, so 2 plus lambda x squared, and then it's 2y squared plus lambda, and then it's s2, that's 6x plus lambda, so 6 plus 4 lambda, x plus and then s2 again 2 minus 3 lambda 
y and then minus 3 plus 2 lambda. Sorry, ran out of space. Wanted to squeeze it in. So that's the equation of the circle that we're looking for. And it's supposed to touch the y-axis. Now, do they mean to touch the y-axis once? Well, anyways, let's see what happens if we set x equal to 0. So we get 2 plus lambda y squared plus 2 minus 3 lambda y minus 3 plus 2 lambda equal to 0. And uh, the number of solutions here determines how many times the circle crosses the y-axis. If the discriminant is positive, it will cross it twice. If the discriminant is 0, it will cross it once. Um, so I think I'm going to interpret touch as meaning just once. So that means the delta, the discriminant, has to equal 0. And that gives us two values of lambda, which gives us two circles. So I, yeah, I'm happy with this now. I really like this question. Uh, b squared minus 4ac has to equal 0. b squared minus 4ac has to equal 0. So I actually I don't, I don't even need this. And what I'm very happy about is I didn't have to find the intersection points, which I really didn't want to. Uh, okay, so that would be uh, 4 minus 12 lambda plus 9 lambda squared minus 4 uh, minus 6. And then that's 4 lambda minus 3 lambda is lambda uh, plus 2 lambda squared is equal to 0. So 2 lambda squared. So that's... That is 9 lambda squared minus 8 lambda squared. That's lambda squared. Nice. Uh, minus 12 lambda minus 4 lambda is minus 16 lambda. Oh, wouldn't this be great if we could factorize it? Let's not jinx it. 4 plus 24 is 28. Equals 0. Ho oh, oh, ho. It's looking good. Uh, 14 and 2. Lambda minus 14 lambda minus 2 so by simply subbing those values in we can get the two circles uh, so the first one uh, 2 we'll say so that would be 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 2 8 and 6, 14, x, 2 minus 6 is minus 4y, minus 3 plus 4 is 1, and then 14, so that would be 16x squared plus 16y squared, <sighs> and then 14 times 4 plus 6 is 62, x and then 2 minus 3 times 14 is minus 40y and then minus 3 plus 2 times 14 so 28 so that's 25 equals 0. So these are two circles which will pass through the intersection point and uh, will touch the y-axis. So I can't do it in this video because I'm not on my computer with the software, but I really, really, really would like to graph this later and just see that and convince myself that we've gotten this right. And I really like this question and I'm going to make a second video uh, for this. So we'll call this one part two and uh, or part one and uh, part two would be the graph. Okay. Okay, that's a really good question. Uh, took me nearly 20 minutes to do so, yes, I was right with my assessment of the first part that there wasn't more to do there because there's plenty left in the question to do. So, yep, there we go, a 20-minuter.